And we're back with more of the Pokemon film. Ah! You really sprung that one on me. <laughs> you get sprung! It's time, Bunny! It's time. It is, unfortunately, time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film 223 skidoo our way into the second half of our big show. And it is said second half wherein we finally, eventually get around to discussing our all new high definition, unrated director's cut, now with 18 hours of deleted scenes. And look, I'm sorry for this aside. In the middle of what is usually a pretty standard introduction to this, the second half of the show. But hey, Zack Snyder, make a good movie the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy ass idea. Crazy ass idea. Now the dude wants a few million dollars to re edit the movie Sucker Punch into a better film. Yeah, I had heard that. His original vision. And it's like, bitch, move, move on. Now, thanks to hashtag release the Snyder Cut, all these douche canoes out there fanboys think that they can just bully studios into getting their way. But bullying doesn't work. If bullying did work, we'd see Coyote versus Acme. Yeah. I'm still pissed off about that. But um, it like suddenly every director thinks that they can George Lucas their movie. Yeah. You know? So here's my plan. Let's give every movie a hashtag Snyder cut. Hey, filmmakers who made Oogie Loves, hashtag release the Snyder cut. Yeah. The Snyder cut of Oogie Loves is six hours long and it's all in black and white. The Snyder cut of Josie and the Pussycats? Hell yeah. Uh Here's what other movies? Hey, Caligula. There's already 30 different uh, versions of your movie, but hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Yes. It's 10 hours long, and it's just people walking. Cut out all the pornography. It's just walking. It's Caligula, the walking cut. Yeah. I would I would like does... to see I would like to see the Snyder cut of Elvis's Blue Hawaii. Hell yeah. Clam bake. Gonna have a clam bake. Greatest song ever written by man. Yeah. Mama's little baby loves clam bake, clam bake. Best movie ever made. Best song ever written. Uh, move over theme to Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Fun fact, Bunny. Originally, a Serbian film was a family-friendly musical. Yeah. But they kind of shifted tones. Yeah. Like, laid into the film. Hey, that's Serbian the- film. Hashtag release the Snyder Cut. That's what happens when you have too many people trying to rewrite sound of music. Yeah, I think the best way to put it <laughs> is... You get a lot of is, baby rape. Yeah, I think the best way to put it is too many cooks, too many cooks, too many cooks, too many cooks. Uh, anywho, this week we begin our seventh and final themed summer entitled 2024, The Very Cheap Summer of Roger Corman with a double feature of two of his earliest earlier works 1954's The Fast and the Furious and 1956's Oklahoma Woman yes now first off a little programming note sadly the film Oklahoma Woman is not (laughs) about a brave 
beautiful Hispanic trans woman and the struggles she faced this while trying to live in a small town in Oklahoma <coughs> and juggling five kids. Uh, no, this film is a fucking dumbass western. Yeah. Fuck this movie. And I wholeheartedly expected 1954's The Fast and the Furious to be an explosion-filled, action-packed thrill fest where muscular idiots talk about family. No, this is a boring romance and a fucked-up one at that. Yes. I hate that trope. And here's the thing about R.C. Cola, <coughs> which is my new name for Roger Corman. Oh, okay. I don't want to call him Roger Corman anymore. He's R.C. Cola for the rest of the summer. Fuck. What about what about the summer of R.C. Cola? Uh, Might be a better title. Anyway, uh, here's the thing about R.C. Cola. He is really great. And both of these movies feature this, but more Fast and the Furious than uh, The Oklahoma Woman. Um... R.C. Cola is great at playing loud, intense action music during the most boring scene you've ever fucking seen. Yeah. And I hate it. I hate it. Oh, maybe we'll walk to Mexico. And then they're walking through a forest, but then the music is like... <laughs> and it's like, why are you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> RC Cola. I will say <laughs> this though. Um, uh, okay, so um, I don't like Roger Corman's serious attempts at fucking all. Yeah. Especially the shitty westerns. Jesus fucking Christ. I can't wait to get to the cult classic Corman. Yeah. You know, it conquered the world. The man with the x ray eyes, all the Eddie Allen Poe shit, uh, little, house, little Shop of Horrors, Piranha, the fucking Ramones. There is so much there. I mean, there we so really much. just have to take a, a, a sampling, you know, like yeah. Roger Corman in his acid days. Yeah, you know? so, so what I'm so at first I was just gonna go. Let's go from his his first film in 1954 and just move our way chronologically, picking some movies of vital importance. No, fuck that. I'm now trying to get every type of movie. First one, like this crime, drag racing story. Second one, a western. He's done so many different types of movies. Yeah. We have to. I'm sorry. We have to do the Fantastic Four. It's got to be on the list. We are obviously doing okay. the fucking Fantastic Four. We can't not do it. And I, I even think we've done it before. It doesn't matter if we have or haven't. We have to do it. And when we get there, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch every Fantastic Four movie. Uh-oh. Shouldn't be that difficult. There's only been three. And yeah, then see but they're Fantastic the Roger Four Corman. movies. Because in all honesty, this unreleased Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie may very well be the best fucking Fantastic Four movie. It's one and of the better ones. It's better. Yeah. You haven't seen it? What, the Roger Corman one? Yeah. I haven't seen the first fantastic four film i saw the rise of i saw the silver surfer one yeah and i think I we, no 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 the, no, like, no no we the did recent... the first fantastic four movie no we i we did the roger corman one i don't think we no 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 did. no no did we do the it? other way around oh well then that was the one and only time that i've ever seen it is for that episode of the podcast yeah weird but no, I'm going to rip through all the Fantastic Four movies. I'm pretty sure that the Roger Corman one is the best right now. They are working on another one. But uh, and, but there's there's so much good shit that Roger Corman has done. 
And when I say good shit, I mean bad shit that's fun to watch. Fucking Chopping Mall. Fucking, there are so many. Yeah. And I can't wait to get to those. But our movies are not those. Yeah. Not at all those. So, first off, The Fast and the Furious, a.k.a. Florence Nightingale Syndrome with Cars. Fuck this movie, and I hate this trope. You know what this trope reminds me of? The swept 20s. away. Oh, well, yeah, swept, swept away. But away. no, I was, I was thinking of that fucking Chris Pratt science fiction movie. Passengers. Passengers from 2016, yeah. where he's this horrible person who was woken up like 90 years too early, and he's bored, so he wakes up another innocent woman and pretends that it was an accident. But yeah. they still end up falling for each other. Fuck you, that's gross. He is a horrible person. He is a bad... He's the bad guy in that movie. Okay, okay. But you don't know he's the bad guy. You know? You don't yeah. know he's the bad guy. So you can see the romance kind of progressing. Still yeah. kind of a shitty movie. But still. Yeah. In, in both this and Swept Away, they are openly abusive uh-huh yeah and you fall in yeah. love anyway and that is exactly this movie i hate it when a movie has that trope of guy kidnaps girl girls all like you're a monster a monster and a creep and i will never love you and then 45 minutes later they're fucking in a barn yeah What the fuck? I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. It's like you said earlier. And it's like, oh, you guys are in love? Yeah? You don't know each other. This is called trauma bonding. Yeah. Y'all don't fucking know each other. So I hate this movie. And also, here's another and aside. And, 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 and it's just compounded worse by this being quite a popular current male fantasy. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, this might as be this might as well be the Matt Wall story. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um there was one thing in this movie that I liked and thought was funny. Just one. It was one moment where I actually smiled and I think audibly chuckled. Uh oh. They're at the car race and the announcer says, uh, um, whatever her name was, Maureen Stapleton, your son Billy is at the announce table. He says he is not lost, but yes. you are. And it's like, oh. I like this one scene. I hate everything else. All of it. This movie fucking sucks. Now, I know that there are a lot of reasons why this movie sucks, but I there's just one thing that has really been bugging me. Okay. So, Bunny, you find yourself locked in an old, rusty bar. Yeah. It has been locked. You're locked inside of a barn. A very old looking barn. Yeah. There are ways to get out of there. Yeah, oh, oh, oh I, God, yes, 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 yes. Yes. There are ways to get out of this barn that don't require you to set fire to the fucking barn while you're in it. Yeah. What type of sick mind operates like that? And what about this this Barbara character? That's obviously me. Honey, this is our lives, and it's so embarrassing. I'm gonna throw Yeah, a... yeah, I was just saying I was saying the exact same thing. And and like she can't it's tear a couple of a couple of them boards out. 
Yeah. And get out. The fucking place is falling down already. And she and lights a goddamn fire. If if there are all of the elements to start a fire in a barn, there might be other things like pitchforks or maybe even instruments that you can use to open the fucking barn. Yeah. To remove a few nails. But then oh, a passerby does save her, I guess. Gets her Looking. into his car. Yeah. And they leave, and they leave the fucking bar, barn burning. Yeah. Yeah, they leave the barn burning. I guess, I guess they did that so that Roger Corman could say that this film was a barn burning. Oh. That wasn't a dad joke. It was a mom joke. To be clear. I hated this movie. But a few things. Number one, I would pay good fucking money to see a shot for shot, scene for scene, line for line, psycho starring Vince Vaughn remake of this movie using the cast of the current Fast and Furious movie. Interesting. I would fucking love that. And it's fucking Vin Diesel and The Rock, but they're in these tiny jalopies going 40 miles an hour. Yeah. I I would pay good money to see that. Fucking John Cena as a fat man who gets pistol whipped at a diner. <laughs> the thing that kept freaking me out is I spent an entire summer in El Centro, California. That is a piece of shit okay. nothing town. Okay, hold on a second, though, because I really think this is kind of genius. And considering the rivalry, then I really think that, that The Rock has to be the guy from this movie and Vin Diesel plays the girl. Hell yes! Gold idea! Ten stars! Let's ten get that real-world no, animosity no. working for us. That is fucking amazing. You know what I would also love to see? If Vin Diesel um, goes full Bugs Bunny. Yes, that's what I would like to see. I would like to see... The Rock play the star, and the woman played by um, the guy from Snatch. The action hero. What was his name? I keep Jason forgetting his Statham? name. Jason Statham. Yes. I'd be okay with that. Mm. That would also be wonderful. And also, I, like, I would I like, like to... I like Vin Diesel better. And again, I do want to see Vin Diesel go full Bugs Bunny. I want him to see the, the, the long blonde trashy wig, the, the big red lipstick, pink sweater, big fake tits, and yeah, that would just be Vin Diesel throughout the whole movie. Yeah. Now, we have mentioned this earlier on the podcast. And we've mentioned this in other episodes of the podcast. However, I would once again like to point out that Fast and Furious actor Paul Walker had a literal and well-documented history of dating underage girls, literal children. He was 33 when he started dating Jasmine Gosnell, who was 16. And Abriana Atwell was also 16 when he dated, when she dated Paul Walker. But do you hear about this on TV, on the news, in the media, and popular culture? No. Why? Because he was in the Vroom Vroom movies that basic bitches like so much. <laughs> so as much as I hate 1954's The Fast and the <coughs> Furious, this is the preferred version, the superior version, 
because it doesn't have someone who has a fetish for 16 year old girls that we now, know of that we know of that we know of. okay so i posted about the podcast on twitter on twitter and i put the pope the pope on film podcast will be live on twitch in about 45 minutes for discussions on libertarians tim curry paul walker and our feature films are two roger corman films so come say hi if for no other reason then i'll look sexy as hell and i posted a poster for oklahoma woman and then i was gonna post the fast and the furious poster but i decided instead just to post a screenshot of an article from april of 2020 say called Paul Walker's history of dating teenage girls should never be forgotten. That's when I started getting attacked. So the first, uh, so uh, the Twitter user at fake car girl 18 posted under that, you will never be a woman, a man in a wig attacking an infinitely superior man in his death. We will be sure to piss on your grave after you join the other 41% of your community. Which was her bigoted way of saying, I should kill myself. So I responded. Say that, say that again, I completely dozed out. And where, and where was this? On Twitter. Okay. Because I posted about how Paul Walker has a history of dating little 16-year-olds. So, at fake car girl 18 uh, responded, you will never be a woman, a man in a wig, attacking an infinitely superior man in his death. We will be sure to piss on your grave after you join the other 41% of your community. That was her... Um, coded right wing dog whistle saying that I sh as a trans woman should kill myself. Yes. So I responded back first off all natural hair but thanks for the compliment. Secondly it is a well documented fact that Paul Walker in his 30s had a history of dating 16 year old girls. That is a historical fact. And it says a lot about you that you're defending an underage woman lover by being a bigoted ass. Well, that started a lot. So okay. then she put, so what if it is well documented, you confused animal? Paul's ex, Jasmine, is now 34 and doesn't have a single bad word to say about him. I'll believe the woman herself about her own experiences and not a man in a skirt clutching pearls on her behalf. Fuck you. Well, I didn't tell this to her, but um, the joke's on you. I don't own pearls. Yeah. But I posted, you're defending a deceased 30-year-old man who had a well-documented obsession with banging 16-year-olds, and you're responding to this by telling a complete stranger to fucking kill themselves. Who do you think is the monster here? So... Then she responded, leave Paul alone, you absolutely confused Truny Tune POS. Worry about the disproportionate amount of sex pests in your own mentally ill community and not a dead guy who harmed no one. Please join the 41% of your community and keep yourself safe. Middle finger emoji. So I responded to that by sending her um, this article from GOAT.com. Paul Walker's history of dating, dating teenage girls should never be forgotten. Then I also sent her this article from car website Jalopnik.com entitled, When Are We Going to Address How Paul Walker Had Relationships with Underage Girls from 2018? And then I also sent her an article from LittleThings.com entitled Paul Walker began dating his last girlfriend when he was 33 and she was only 16. And uh, for some reason, that pissed her off. So she got a beautiful picture of me and retweeted it with, why is this thing, me, 
trying to get others to hate Paul as much as it hates itself. The world loves Paul, but hates truths. You're not going to get society on your side or to vote in your favor by attacking beloved deceased actors. Is she, is she trying to coin her own slur? What's this yeah. rune thing? Yeah. Stop trying to make fetch happen, basically. So, so then I responded to that with the 2021 thethings.com article. Fans are deeply uncomfortable about Paul Walker's relationship with Jasmine Pilchard Gosnell. Here's why. So she kept getting pissed off. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a two-parter. Oh, no, a <laughs> three-parter? Or is this a two-parter? Um, damn right, I'm defending it. Paul had two 16-year-old girlfriends, Jasmine and Aubriana both of whom are now in their mid to late 30s and also defend him and speak highly of him. Why should I listen to you, your he, she ass over the women who are actually involved? I bet you support 16-year-olds changing their gender, though, but not having the freedom to date who they want. Shit, sex change and puberty blockers have lifetime effects while you change, can change boyfriends anytime. You are the fucking monster, both due to your beliefs and your repulsive physical state of being. But knowing that Paul is and always will be beloved while you, you troons are so hated that your rights are being stripped away left and right nationwide brings me peace. Whew. That was hard for me to all get out on account of I have asthma. Mm -hmm. So then this is what I said. Oh, I forgot this one. Here's something from Reddit. Today I learned actor Paul Walker dated multiple 16-year-old girls openly while he was in his 30s. And then I sent her... Damn it, warning. Okay. Then I sent her... Here's another article from Medium.com, lesser-known facts about Paul Walker. I don't think you'll like number one. How many articles have I sent you now? Six or seven, I have lost count. Um, so then she messaged back, you stupid motherfucker, I am a Paul fan, and I personally know Jasmine. I am already aware of this, you brain-dead wildebeest. <coughs> Paul did nothing wrong, and the women themselves have said so. Women do not need men speaking for them. And then I said, great, thanks. Here's a list you might like from WatchMojo.com. Top 10 celebrities who scandalously dated teenage girls. <laughs> so uh, that was fun. So then she kept going. Uh, guilty of statutory rape, Jasmine was a freshman in college in Vancouver when her and Paul got together. They lived there during the early stages of their relationship, and I will have you know, the age of consent in Canada is 16. Paul has never been charged with anything. Deflecting to a dead guy's happy relationship, and then I, I, I cut her off because she was writing such massive things <laughs> that she would write one tweet, send it, and then continue writing it on another. So I put, ew, gross. So to you, dating prepubescent girls is okay. Sorry, I'm blocking your ass creep. And then I blocked her. Nice. So that's what I had to deal with right before uh, doing this. But, yeah. The guy dated two different 16-year-old girls, and you've decided to defend that by being a bigoted piece of shit. Yeah. Okay. Great. And it's like, oh, okay, whatever. So, so, um, I. That's why we absolutely were not watching the Fast and the Furious movies. You know, when you have to say, um, actually, the age of consent is, you've already lost the fucking argument. Yeah. 
Innocent. But, like, yeah, but, uh, but, you, but you're talking about people who support child marriage. Yeah. I mean, and it's like, oh yeah, so many of, uh, so many trans people are perverts. Yeah. Uh, no, I think you're thinking of white male church leaders. Yeah. And not trans people. I think you're talking about football coaches. You're talking about beloved teachers. You're talking about the cool youth pastor who wears his hat backwards. You're talking about the old white guy who runs the youth group. You're not talking about fucking trans people, you piece of shit. Mm -hmm. I hate that woman who attacked me on Twitter almost as much as I hate the 1956 <laughs> film Oklahoma Woman. <laughs> Trying to wrap it up. This is definitely the second film in a double feature, though. Right, Bunny? <laughs> like, when you do a double feature, yeah. the first film is the good one, and then the second film is the one that gets people to just leave. Right. This is definitely the second film in the double feature. Well, but I, least... I did. I fell asleep. Yeah, I had a hard time getting through this. Me. I had a hard time getting through this. That says a lot. So, uh, uh, this one he actually directed. He produced the Fast and the Furious, and he was a he was a producer for like the first year of his <laughs> life. And then someone said, "Hey, do you want a three picture deal?" And he made three westerns. Only one has ever been released on VHS or DVD, and that's this week's movie, Oklahoma Woman. This is one of the first movies he ever directed. The last film he just produced and came up with the story. But hello, Dick! Dick Miller, my fucking yeah. hero. Yeah. That man is amazing. And that dude, this is the first appearance of Dick Miller as bartender. We will see more of his ass this summer. Um, so yeah, this is a Western, but it's all about a small town's election. Who gives a shit? Yeah. This is a nothing film. I can barely understand what's happening or who anyone is or, or anything. Fuck this movie. But I will say that the hero ended up being, uh, one of the stars of the creature from the Black Lagoon. And one of the <laughs> two women, either the good woman or the bad woman, uh, was the in the amazing colossal man's wife? Uh huh. So, like, I I didn't like the first film, The Fast and the Furious. But trying to sit through the Oklahoma woman makes The Fast and the Furious look like it's fucking Shakespeare. Yes. So we we, we did have the same fat guy. Yeah. 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 He was, there were he a few was the, crossover characters. Yeah, and, and you're you're already starting to see the the Corman stable because that fat guy who who uh, got beaten up in the first scene of the movie yeah. at the at the saloon that was the guy who wanted desperately to buy dead cat from the green door. Uh, in a bucket of blood. Oh, oh. <coughs> okay. That's how much I know the movie A Bucket of Blood that I can be like, this small part in this movie is this small part in this movie. It's 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 magic. I have nothing else to say. Fuck these movies. Uh yeah, yeah. I <laughs> Touch okay. Connors. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. But next episode, we're starting into some of the good ones. Okay. Okay. Because this week just pissed me the fuck off. So next episode, we're watching two movies from 1957, not of this earth, and Rock All Night. Rock All Night. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, it features the platters. 
it says on the poster that, you know, this was like a teeny bopper film about a radio DJ. Um, and the Platters, the band, make an appearance in this film. And that's like a big deal. They did a shit ton of hits. Yeah. They did fucking Sea of Love. Um, 16 tons. Like, that was them. Yeah. So that's kind of a big deal. It's like a piece of rock history. That's what we're doing next week. Not of this earth and rock all night. I'm pretty sure both of them are available on YouTube. I'm not 100% sure about rock all night, but um, were you able to find a preview for Oklahoma Woman, a trailer? Because I no. couldn't find shit. No. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't just me. I was like, damn, I cannot find this. Maybe Bunny will. But no, I couldn't find shit. <laughs> That's why I gave up and I just used the uh, Fast and Furious trailer. Yeah. Shit. Okay. So next week, not of this earth and rock all night. Uh, I haven't put them on our shared cough cough, but I will okay. make sure you, you get them. But that's next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, uh, the film Passengers. Paul Walker like 16 year old girls. Uh COVID exploitation. Google AI. I gotta say, I think this has been a good episode of the podcast. It's been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I'm I, I'm glad you said that. I thought it, but I didn't want to say it. But yes, I concur with your assessment. Good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And on behalf of Jeannie and Natasha and Q and uh, Eleanor and everybody else in the house, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathen. And you shoggle bobs. Ah, the camera cut off. Yes, okay, top. And you boop.